So today we have Joshua Powers from Hope Linux, Raphael Herzog from Kali Linux, Solveig from Tails, uh, Nolan, sorry I forgot your last leak, from um, Cumulus Linux, Matthias Klump from Tanglu, and Adrian from Rescatux. Okay, so we'll start with introductions. If you want to say a little bit about you, your distribution and your involvement in the distribution. All right, so again, I work for uh, uh, HP, working on HLinux. Um, we basically produce a uh, derivative for HP's use, uh, particularly on uh, HP Helion, which is our cloud software. Um, my role is I work on the distribution and QA team. Um, the QA side is obvious. Um, we do lots of testing with both HP hardware um, and making sure that our custom kernel works there, as well as making sure we're producing a, a stable system. Um, and the distribution side is working with our partners on using Linux um, and working with external uh, partners as well on getting their drivers into our distribution and working with them to add some advanced features. Hi, I'm Rafael Herzog. I'm working on Kali Linux, which is a penetration, penetration testing distribution. Uh, it's built on top of Debian testing. I've I've been doing packaging and infrastructure stuff to help them run their distribution. Uh, hi, I'm Selveig. So I contribute to Tails. Uh, we gave a talk a few days ago, so it's about... Uh, it's a Debian derivative based on Debian. <laughs> uh, focused on privacy and security, and it's... Uh, live system, so you don't install it. Hello, I'm Nolan. I work on uh, Cumulus Linux, which is a, a derivative of Debian that is uh, uh, used on network switches and routers, so those kind of little Windows pizza boxes with a bunch of Ethernet ports on the front. Uh, so it's a little unusual in that respect. Um. Uh, hi, I'm Matthias. I work for Tanglu, uh, which is best described, unfortunately, as very similar to Ubuntu. We have a strong focus on the non-technical Linux unexperienced end user and desktop user. So we ship latest uh, KDE and GNOME in a time-based six to eight month release cycle. And we also want to try out some new things like atomic upgrades, uh, up, have a radical simplified installer. So yeah, that's what Tanglu is about, new technology and end user focus. Uh, hi, I'm Adrian. So uh, Rescatus is a table life based uh, distribution. We use LXDE as a desktop environment. So its main feature is that it has a point and click wizard, uh, which is meant for rescue tasks. So for example, in only three steps, you can recover grab and, and then you can boot into a new, new Linux game. So, I did a lightning talk on the 15th. You, it's already online, so you can watch it for more details so that we don't get a longer presentation. Um, so in the audience, we have Zigo from Laurentis. So uh, you want to introduce it, Ivan? OK. <laughs> So I, I'm working on the Debian side of uh, uh, MOS, which is Mirantis OpenStack, and that's a derivative of both uh, currently Ubuntu Trusty and uh, CentOS, which is based, uh, which is focused on deploying OpenStack on medium to large scale uh, clouds. Also, also in the audience, we have Gardens from LearnStick. Um, we have some Grimmel people here, and. Emmanuel Casper for Proxmox. I see John Vert from SteamOS. And there are several people from Ubuntu. So you can ask questions of any of the derivatives in the room. So anyone to kick off with a question? I'm not sure which camera is pointing at me, but that one's good. Excellent. Um, Fairly simple question, I guess. Um, why Debian? W why choose Debian out of all the other releases, or even make, or even making your own? Um, what sort of advantages are there for you? What's the importance of, of what Debian does for for helping you to produce your distributions? Uh, 
Yeah. Stand up. Okay. Um, for Tanglu, uh, one more important point is that I am a Debian developer, so it was kind of the obvious choice to base on Debian. But also Debian has a very strong focus and quality assurance and the packages we usually get from Debian are really well tested and are working well. So um, yeah, that's, that's definitely a thing. Also um, creating another distribution on top of Debian is uh, not that hard and there's lots of support in the Debian community for derivatives. So uh, it has a tradition of supporting derivatives. So that's something which definitely helps us and uh, entangle. So uh, on the HP side of things, um, you know, strong community, seeing you know, thousands of people kind of contribute and being able to contribute ourselves um, directly to you, um, not having to go through any kind of commercial entity, but being able to go directly to the community and work with the community. Um, also the, the strong, uh, you know, strong sense of, of you know, denoting between free software and non-free software, right? And that's a big thing for us in giving to our customers and being able to say, look, this is, these licenses have been checked out. We haven't violated any of them. We're not going to cause you any pain or cause you any legal issues. And so working with Debian uh, there as well has just been, been awesome. Um, first off, I'm just a one-time Debian user, so I couldn't really imagine using anything else. But from a practical standpoint, um, there's several uh, key things. I mean, you know, switches run all sorts of weird uh, CPU architectures, and Debian supports them all. Like, Debian supports ones that, like, you know, no one's ever made a switch on. So that was a huge advantage um, in that we didn't have to set up a bunch of cross infrastructure and you know figure out how to recompile packages on some architecture they've never been compiled on before. And also, you know, I mean, ePackage is cool and all, but the actual, I think, true value is the kind of care and effort that people put into making consistent packages that work well together and kind of work together as a piece as a whole, um, which you often don't always see with other distributions, regardless of what kind of technology choices they make for packaging. For Kali Linux, the choice was rather obvious. Uh, obvious sorry, uh, uh, it's a successor of Backtrack, and Backtrack at the time was mainly uh, handmade with scripts and stuff like that. And they really wanted something cleaner and more tr uh, reliable, so they picked Debian bec also because, uh, well, it's a quality because of the quality, and they can <coughs> concentrate on what matters for them, which is. Uh, uh, large or not so large set of package uh, that they add on top of Debian. So I don't want to spend time too much on the uh, on what already works and then can concentrate on uh, the uh, new packages. Uh, we were based on uh, Debian Weezy, Debian Stable, but we switched recently to Debian testing. So there's no more quicker feedback loop, which is useful, but it's also as a cost for us because, uh, well, we, we have problems more regularly and uh, Maybe we can talk about this later in the talk. Okay, so uh, one one reason about uh, choosing Debian is because uh, you can choose. Uh, I mean, Debian is stable, so when you want to build this uh, a live distribution that fixes uh, uh, your system in order to boot again or in order to be in a in a good state, you want it to be stable. And the other reason, you know, uh, user target for Skatex is mainly Ubuntu people, yeah, new by people that uh, it's beginning in, in, in this new Linux world and do not very much how to use the common line interface in order to fix their, their systems. So why uh, we are not uh, developing uh, uh, in with Ubuntu? The reason is because uh, if we develop in Debian, then uh, every uh, Debian derivative can benefit of our uh, improvements. So that's another reason, Debian as a base system for other distributions. So Tails is based on Debian also because we have Debian contributors already and developers. It works, it's fabulous. We love it. We don't know any other distribution uh, that well, so, and it's good. <laughs> okay, we have a question from DKG. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask sort of the counterpoint to Neil's question, which is um, why not Debian? That is, you're doing a derivative distro, which by definition isn't Debian. Um, 
and in some cases that seems like that makes lots of sense, and in other cases it seems like maybe your changes could go into Debian directly. Um, and I wanted to know what you see as the advantage of being a derivative instead of working uh, directly contributing to Debian, and how you see your relationship with Debian as a um, as an upstream. I, I don't mean this as a as a challenge, like everything should be in Debian. I'm just I want to I want to think about what the different uh, advantages are. Uh, we're not a uh, Debian pure blend or something like that, mostly because we are a live system and it's part of the design goals of Tails to be a live system because you cannot ensure the same level of privacy and security if the system is installed and the user can keep changing it. So um, it has to be a derivative in our case. Also, we have a very specific use case, so most of our changes, well, we bring back most of our changes in Debian, but there are a few changes that can will never be in Debian, probably, so. For Kali and Nix, there are both technical and non-technical reasons. Uh, on technical level, uh, well, quite a few software are not really suitable for Debian main, at least, because in security fields, there are many authors who say, don't use this software to attack service, and this is kind of license that is not in line with DFSG. Uh, there's also the fact that uh, we have to ship some software uh, on short notice, and it tends to be, for example, a large Ruby and Rails application with lots of uh, Ruby gems which are not yet available, so we tend to do some acts like integrating a bundle of uh, those Ruby gems into proper binary package, which you could not do uh, within Debian. And also, on the non-technical level, uh, Kai Linux is uh, sponsored uh, by Offensive Security, so they really benefit from the image and its uh, marketing tool for them. So it would be harder to have the same level of, uh, uh, well, it would be harder to create such a brand entirely within Debian. I guess that's the two main reasons on our side. But that said, we, as I said, we're based on testing and we're trying to push more and more stuff within Debian because now it starts to make sense because the feedback, well, the, the time to, between when I upload it to Debian and when it integrates when it comes back to into Kali is much shorter. So for HLinux, um, our, our objective is to work directly with Debian and just consume Debian entirely. Um, there are times where that just isn't possible. Um, but but going back to that, if if you know the community is working and producing you know a great distribution that we want to consume and, and use, and likewise we should be giving back to that distribution. So any of these bug fixes, any of these enhancements that we're, that we're finding, we want to contribute those back. Um, when we were still on Jesse testing, I think we were doing a pretty good job of that, of finding issues, getting them fixed, and not carrying you know, fixes on the side. Um, now that Stable is here, um, we're going off and doing some more advanced feature development and stuff like that, and, and this is where we see ourselves kind of having to carry, uh, like in my talk, I call them foreign packages. These are extra packages with even newer features in them um, that, that probably wouldn't make their way into Stable. Um, another example of that would be like the kernel, where we're carrying newer drivers, like I mentioned earlier, with the more advanced features. Um, and those are things that we like to see down the road in, into Debian, but, but not immediately. So those are kind of the, the, the things that stop us from just consuming Debian entirely. Um, so we're based on stable, so uh, and we put out a release every three months. So the release cycles don't exactly line up. Um, on that score, so uh, but for the most part, we tend to uh, contribute up to upstream, upstream, with the intention that we will then pick up the changes that we contributed in the next stable release of Debian when they pull down those changes from from their upstream. Um, yeah, for Tanglu, there are a few changes which we do like doing a time-based release cycle or changing the installer or going. Um, yeah, shipping uh, newer versions of KDE and GNOME on, a, on this release cycle, which we could not easily do in, in Debian, since if I would propose let's do a time-based release cycle, it would not be uh, in the scope of Debian, because Debian is, uh, wants to do stable and wants to, do, uh, wants to create a stable release, while we want to uh, create a smaller and shorter release cycle. So that wouldn't work, and also um, that we do some changes on packages, which uh, would turn out to be controversial, because Debian is also 
uh, has also a, the desktop users and more advanced users as target group. So uh, all the default choices we do for the user might uh, be a problem for Debian, additionally to the, um, to the release, like, release cycle issue, which uh, would, be an, uh, would be a problem to establish that in Debian. Mm, also, because we advance faster, it's um, more difficult to, uh, well, to get everything done in Debian since the maintainer reaction times are sometimes slower. And we also uh, sometimes uh, do not upgrade the copyright files, so doing the same stuff in Debian would be more complicated and would take much longer. So that's why it's der uh, derivative. So in Roscatox, uh, the main reason why not use Debian directly is uh, because it's faster to develop so that you don't have to care about Debian specific stuff. Then we currently use some uh, Ubuntu PPAs for boot repair and some pat some patches packages. So, so we will have to, so we would have to uh, to migrate these packages into Debian itself to to uh, send the patches and so on. And then there's the thing about the release cycle because we don't always have time to to match with re re release cycle. But um, the RESCAP package, uh, the main app in which it's uh, the wizard in RESCAPX is called RESCAP. So it, it is not packaged yet. But um, I see um, RESCAPX being uh, converted into a uh, pure uh, Debian blend in, in a few years because uh, I don't see why not. So that's it. So actually two questions. Um, which architectures do your derivatives support? Um, the second one, <coughs> when you upgrade um, certain packages like OpenStack or KDE or GNOME, uh, do you know what kind of packages you break? Um, so Usually, um, you care just about a subset of packages when you uh, ship new features. So do you at least know what, what you break in your distributions by these upgrades? Okay, so in Rescatex we support um, uh, 386 or whatever the kernel uh, chips here with the current uh, uh, Debian distribution because uh, we see it was, I think it was 486 and now it's 586. Uh, but the distribution uh, has also an AMD64 kernel so that you can uh, use the 386 uh, packages so that it works in both uh, 386 and AMD64. Uh, well, uh, we cannot uh, test more arch architectures. And the thing about packages uh, upgrading and, br and breaking things, it's just uh, uh, testing again the, uses, the use cases that uh, Rescatas must fix and see if it works everything as intended or, or not. Mm, so, uh this one? Yeah, Tanglu supports uh, AMD64 and uh, i586. And um, we are currently thinking about also supporting ARM, but that uh, requires hardware and some more resources, so it's uh, to bootstrap it. So yeah, it's planned, but not yet, uh, not yet in action. And regarding uh, like what do we know what we break, we uh, pretty much know exactly what we break because we are rebuilding all packages coming from Debian and sync with uh, experimental, unstable, and testing. So um, yeah, we, and we have QA tools in place which tell us if we broke something and what we broke, and uh, so we can fix it uh, in the development suite uh, in time. So yeah, we are aware of that. <laughs> Um, so for architectures, let's see, we support AMD64, uh, PowerPC32, and ARM. And no doubt ARM64 will be coming at some point, but it's uh, not here yet. We're more or less at the mercy of what uh, chips people choose to put in these switches. So it's kind of not uh, entirely up to us. 
And as for breaking packages, it's never been a huge problem for us because, as I said, we're based on stable. Um, and you know, there's only a handful of patches, uh, packages that we patch aggressively, mainly Quagga and the kernel and you know, STP um, and things like that that are very networking centric. And so you know, we have a constrained set of things to test, so we just test them. Uh, for Kali Linux, we have four architectures, uh, AMD64, E386, and uh, ARML and ARM outflow. Because actually, uh, a lot of uh, Kali Linux is embedded on small devices, on, uh, on phones, and stuff like that, which is quite useful in penetration testing cases. Uh, typical case, uh, asking someone to uh, let uh, you recharge your phone, keep <laughs> plug your phone, and it actually enables a network device on the which will bridge your traffic over and intercept everything. <laughs> so that, that kind of stuff. And uh, for the second question about uh, do we know what we break? Uh, not always. We, well, we, we have quite a lot of bug ports. Or we used to have quite a lot of bug ports. And uh, it's sort of manual verification. But now, since we are based on testing, we have our own Britney instance. So at least we detect when we break dependencies. Dependency do not cover all problems that can arrive, but uh, at least uh, we ensure uh, that uh, all packages are installable, uh, dependency-wise. We also have a Jenkins instance that uh, installs all our meta packages uh, once a day, so uh, we discover such problems. Uh, also problems in post and stuff like that quite soon. And if you follow my monthly reports, you will see that I have filed quite a few bugs the last month about such problems that will have been introduced introduced in Kali um, through Debian testing. Um, so we originally started shipping with or supporting i386 and the AMB64. We dropped i386 um, after lots of discussion, um, and we're kind of investigating ARM64 right now and trying to get it going um, as well. Uh, as far as Breaking things, we do plenty of QA, making sure that everything installs properly and builds properly. Um, still building some of that work out, um, but again, just Debian, and, Debian. and I'm going to continue to work on that and have some more features that will be useful by others, I hope. Uh, but that's uh, hopefully the main points I see for the future right now. So for H Linux, I think as I said earlier, you know, working with the community and, and making sure that we're not, you know, entirely becoming a, almost a fork of, of Debian, but making sure that we're con working and contributing directly into Debian and getting and pulling directly from there. Um, in five years, hopefully that becomes even more and more natural to us. It's something that's a little new and still kind of getting the hang of, of what that process looks like. Um, I, I certainly hope in five years that we've figured that out. Um, also, I think uh, some of this, this, the trademark discussions we've had earlier this week around you know getting Debian's name out there, um, getting it known to our customers, you know what we're doing and, and how we're using Debian, um, and so that they're you know more aware of it, as well as getting rid of other you know, kind of uh, distributions throughout HP potentially that that you know people are using Red Hat or, or CentOS throughout things. Maybe they could be using us instead, um, and, and again adding value. Uh, back to you know, whatever needs that they have, working with them, and then working with the community, um, and then seeing those things put put into Debian. Uh, I hope that in five years, the idea of running a vendor proprietary network operating system on a switch or a router sounds about as insane as running a mainframe. Um, yeah, for Tanglu in five years, I have no idea what happens, uh, but I see, I want to see it as a, a bigger community of, uh, of awesome people working together on the distribution in close collaboration with Debian, so we can do the things which Debian with this longer release cycle can't do and complement it on the desktop while Debian is running on servers or on uh, more conservative desktops. And um, yeah, this is uh, one thing and also, um, I would like to see Tanglu running on mobile phones. There are some faint ideas in the future of uh, how to do that, maybe, because uh, now uh, Canonical and Ubuntu have paved the way of, uh, well, uh, making it possible to do it. But yeah, this is uh, a longer discussion. But yeah, in five years, it might be possible. 
So, SCATAX, uh, in five years, I see no future. I mean, uh, I prefer SCATAX to be a uh, Debian Rescue blend so that uh, I can fo focus better on the RESCAP uh, program. Um, well, so that I don't have to care about um, default rescue application that should be uh, on the live CD. And so for the new future, uh, there's the, um, we have to release uh, Rescatax based on Jesse because it's currently based on Wisi and Beta, so it has to be stable. And we have to also sort out, sort out the uh, secure and ACE Linux support. So if, if anyone uh, knows how to deal with secure and ACE Linux from a Debian Live, please contact me. So that that's it, the near future uh, release, uh, going to be released soon. Uh, so in the future, future of Tails, that would be very, very fabulous if we didn't need Tails anymore, if the government stopped spying of the, of the, on their people and other people, if the companies stopped wanting to sell your information. But that's not going <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> but that's not going to happen. So uh, let's hope there are more privacy-focused distributions so that the different use cases are covered and for tail specifically more hardening for sure and maybe arm and uh, whatever you want to contribute make exist in it any more questions probably would sound more like derivatives 101 quiz but um, did you consult to the page on wikidebian.org derivatives guidelines? There is such a page, right? Here. Oh, raise the hand who did. Yes. Oh, nice. So uh, how do you deal with the problem that uh, you have modified or uploaded new packages? How do you channel off the bug reports to your derivatives? Because so far, I think we didn't improve with report bug to support, let's say, alternative bug reporting systems, right? We have just primitive uh, email or the, um, what, what the system we use in Debian itself, right? But ideally we could support like multiple backends for the report bug. So in Tails, we, don't, we have a small subset of Debian packages and we don't have report bug. So we, have, we ship whisper back, which is a way for users to send encrypted emails. So we get those bug reports and we open bugs either on our bug tracker, if it's tail specific or upstream, sometimes in Debian, sometimes in other upstream. So we have kind of a filter between the user bug report and the, uh, so our user's bug report never happen directly on the bug tracker. They go through us and we dispatch them. So this was one of the problems that we tried tackling right away with HLinux. Um, it was it was a big concern of ours that that all sorts of questions would be coming to the Debian community, which shouldn't be going to the Debian community. Um, so our original thought process, and I talked about this a little bit during my derivatives talk, um, but we were taking every package and actually inserting the word HLinux into the version name, so that they would um, you know they would know who's who where it came from. They would knew, know that you know it's coming directly from HLinux, even if it was a package that we weren't even changing. Um, they would come to us so that even if the community saw it, they'd go, this is HLinux, this is HLinux's problem, go, go deal with them. Um, after kind of doing this for the first release and kind of thinking about it a little bit, we said, you know, this does not make sense for the packages that we're not changing. Um, those packages are, are just the same as upstream. If they want to go upstream to report an issue, go for it. That, that's totally fine. Ideally, they should be coming to us anyway, um, but th that didn't, didn't make a lot of sense. For any package that we are modifying source or, or making any kind of changes at all, it still gets uh, the HLinux string added into the version so that it's very clear that it is still uh, coming from us. So that you know, if the community sees it, they'll know, oh, it came from HLinux, it's not from us. Um, so that's kind of how we've been handling it. On our side, uh, 
uh, we have no special solution either. Uh, we got a few users who misreported bugs to the Debian bug tracker. Uh, that's why I still have it on my to-do list somewhere, buried down to fix report bug, because, uh, well, it's easy to detect when you're running a derivative, and uh, you should really uh, not allow filing bugs to Debian directly, and instead uh, have some way to redirect it somewhere, some other email, or have some special instruction. I I think uh, there in the DPKG Bounder file there's already a, a link for uh, where to report bugs. So uh, actually, a report bug should just display this bug, uh, this link instead. So it's n it should not be too hard to to implement. Uh, there might even be a wish list bug already on report bug, but nobody did it yet. And instead, uh, we just advertise widely that we have a separate bug tracker and user usually know about it, so they fight bug on our side, except for a few uh, uh, beginners who, who don't read stuff. <laughs> That's it. Um, so we don't we don't ship report bug. Instead, we have actually a support team that that people would come to with their problems, and then we have our own internal bug tracking system. So we don't tend to file bugs upstream. We tend to fix them and you know send the patches upstream, and then you know let it kind of filter back down to us, and you know we'll cl carry backports of those patches as necessary. <coughs> yeah, uh, our users like to file bugs at the forums, but we uh, are managing to teach them to file them at our bug tracker, which is independent from Debian and which is the place where bugs should go. And in case the issue affects Debian as well, we are uh, reporting it to Debian again, or we are just linking the bug because we have a field in our bug tracker called upstream bug, um, where we then connect it with the Debian bug, so we can track both and uh, yeah, don't get lost in the in the bug flood. So. Yeah, that's what we do. Okay, so Roskatax, uh, if we find any bug, so we report to upstream. Uh, but sometimes you also need to report to Debian package itself because sometimes upstream do not reply and maybe the fix is, is, is important. Uh, then there's about uh, gathering bugs. Uh, mainly it's done uh, within the uh, internal chat that the users can use inside the distribution. And mainly the, the bugs that we file into Debian are Debian Live uh, improvements so that uh, uh, we can make uh, our users' life easier and uh, Debian Live uh, even better. And another problem about gathering bugs in Rescatex, because Rescatex is uh, mainly a tool for fixing your computer, is that uh, when you try to fix your computer, you try several tools and you want your computer uh, to be uh, fixed as soon as possible. So if Rescatex does not work for you, you are going to, to search another tool so that it boots again and you can use it. So we might lose some bugs uh, because of that, and finally, what uh, I will I would like to see somehow is uh, the book tracker tools and web-based things, uh, so that they connect one with uh, it's one another, so that uh, you can um, go into Ubuntu and say into Ubuntu Book Tracker and say that Debian is the parent book, book tracker and somehow um, the links, are the, the bugs are linked and, uh, and forwarded. Yeah, but I, I think that something like that already exists. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Uh, so <coughs> I wonder, uh, if there are things that Debian could do differently that would be p make your lives better as derivatives. Um, and I want to encourage you in answering this question, if you have things, maybe if you don't, um, but if you have any ideas, um, be bold, right? Debian is a place where large changes can happen across the infrastructure. And if there are things that Debian doesn't currently do that would make it good for you, just imagine what, what are those things? They might need a team of people, it might need years of work, uh, but what, what are the things that, if we could do it in Debian, would make your lives easier as derivatives? Uh, 
start with, we'll start with Zigo. So uh, what happens to me is that I maintain OpenStack in Debian, okay, and uh, uh, some packages, I don't own them, and we have strong package ownership in Debian, so a package maintainer can decide to upload whenever he wants into SID and break all of my world. So that happened uh, recently with Python Mock, which created eight FTBFSs on my packages. Uh, the maintainer of Python Mock may maybe didn't even know it would do that to me. And uh, so uh, it happened also with SQL Alchemy as well. So one thing that could be really improved is uh, to uh, better know when and where to upload. Like if the Mock maintainer has uploaded to experimental instead of seed, then that was the correct thing to do for me but he didn't know. So if we had um, objectives in Debian to say, okay, we are going to support this software <coughs> and do what it takes to do it in a better way uh, so that we don't break things when we upload, then that would be a huge improvement, at least for me. So uh, I think for us, I, uh, well, just quickly thinking through it, it immediately, uh, the reproducible builds would be great. Um, and, and getting the trademark stuff so that we can, again, put, start using Debian kind of in, in our name or in our product so that people realize, oh, it's just Debian with a little extra. That would be great. Um, big pie in the sky kind of stuff, just thinking about it. Um, I, I do think we're kind of running into an issue with cadence, right, with stable. Stable is great. It, it is, as the name implies, stable, and it definitely is that. Um, but two years down the road, we will be carrying all sorts of different foreign packages and all different stuff to, to get newer features to our customers since we're working on cloud software. What does that look like? Is there a way to get that even faster? It should be we'll be using tested testing builds, something to that extent. So I think the Debian solution for that sort of thing is backports. Um, you can upload backports. Um, you don't have to be the maintainer to do that as well. On our side, uh, uh, what would be nice on the Debian side is to raise awareness that uh, some package in Debian are actually used uh, by derivatives and uh, may be considered twice before removing them. I mean, that's the topic possibly for the QA team or for uh, all the people who are doing, uh, well, what, or teams who are cleaning up uh, their list of packages. Uh, I guess I will uh, bring back this topic in one of the later both uh, because that's really something that can be automated. And uh, well, uh, since we're based on testing, any effort to improve, uh, sorry, any effort to improve testing would be nice as well because uh, we want it to be really working every time. So in Tails, we are, of course, interested in the reproducible builds uh, that some people are working on, so that when it's in Debian, it will allow us to have it in Tails. And uh, there are probably a few things, but in general, Debian is a great upstream, so thank you. Okay, so... Um this is more a personal opinion than Rescatas one, but anyway. So one thing I th think uh, Debian lacks of is uh, communication, or um, I mean Debian communication should be improved. Um, uh, mm, for example, in the Debian Derivatives Wiki, uh, there's work to be done. We are going to do some work with Paul later. and. Um, the thing is that Debian is a, is not only a distribution, but a meta distribution that all other distributions use as a base. And um, sometimes in Debian, people say too often, uh, bring it into Debian. So bring your changes, bring your packages into Debian. And uh, this is right, okay? So we, we want, we, everyone want, uh, every package and every improvement into Debian, th that's right. But we should uh, improve uh, our, uh, our way of um, uh, dealing with uh, der derivatives. Um, <coughs> yeah, on the Tanglu side, it's, um, it would be really great if the tools which are used in the Debian infrastructure would be more uh, 
tailor to also work for the better for derivatives because, for example, in Duck, there are still some hard-coded um, hard distribution or sweep names like uh, unstable or testing, which we uh, patched out to, uh, to make use of Duck. So uh, taking, uh, by getting the idea that other derivatives might want to use the same stuff which is running on the Debian infrastructure would, uh, would be a great thing. And also, um, while switching to the 3.0 um, source format standard is a nice thing because it means we can uh, run uh, automatic rebuilds of packages, of, uh, well, of source packages. And another thing which we really love in Tanglu is that in case we, uh, we do a change and uh, it can't be directly integrated into Debian because it might be uh, a controversial change or you might not want it in there, that you still include it and make it a conditional option that uh, it's uh, included in case the package is compiled in Tanglu. So if you recompile a package on a Tanglu system, you will get this patch. While you compile it on Debian, you will get the previous behavior like it is on Debian. So this means we could drop the difference and uh, basically have the patch upstream and in the end just recompile it to have the different behavior. So yeah, this is something awesome and uh, it would be good if more people could make use of it. Also for Ubuntu, I think this would uh, be of great help. So, but in general, Debian is an awesome upstream and there's not much to complain about. So I think we're out of time. Um, if you later, later today, there's going to be some work on derivatives-related infrastructure in Debian. And I think tomorrow or the next day, there's a BOF between derivatives. Um, and there's also another derivatives work session as well. So thank you, everyone, for coming. And see you around.